what I've discovered is that at this point here is where you can actually tap into the current. That's why I'm calling this the Meg tap. And what you can do is you can tap in uh, here and here at these points. And, and this isn't a tremendous amount of current. I'm amazed that I'm even getting any though. And uh, this obviously needs to be explored because the idea of the perpetual magnet holder is that you energize this once. You remove the battery and this just locks and it holds as electromagnet indefinitely. And by being able to tap into that current here at this point, you know, I've been testing this here for the last couple days and it appears to me that you can pull current uh, perpetually as well. Uh, that will need more testing to verify, but so far it looks good. But anyway, just wanted to kind of show an overview. Uh, the top of this coils wound down into here and here. You've got your battery here that you just used to start the initial action. So, okay, so what we have here is the pretty much just a normal uh, perpetual magnet holder, as people like to call it it's uh, locked right now it's it's actually running so this is a very strong electromagnet at this point I can barely uh, pull these apart but when I do uh, it's now broken and this just comes off there's there's really no no holding power there anymore so to uh, energize it again all I have to do is is just give it one tap of a uh, current here Okay, that's now locked on there so tight I can't uh, even pull it apart without a lot of effort. So that's the basic um, idea of the perpetual magnet holder. Obviously that's a really intriguing effect right there and needs to be researched just on, on that point. So what I went ahead and decided to test uh, for current. And my initial tests were kind of sporadic. I just, you know, I was testing here and here, kind of the uh, the Daniel McFarlane Cook idea. Somehow I got the idea to test between here and the keeper. And I noticed at some point, and I don't remember where I was touching when I noticed it, but I noticed this needle nudge a little at some point. Okay, folks, I've removed the uh, battery from this uh, electromagnet completely now. So it's it's locked. It's got a locked electromagnetic field at this point. And I'm just going to try to show you here how I discovered the effect initially. I was uh, just searching around on this and you'll be able to slightly see that needle. I hope you can see it in the compressed video clip. But um, you can slightly see that needle bouncing when I touch at these points. Again, negative here, positive here, the needle's bouncing up. I hope you can see that. It's subtle. But that was the uh, tip-off that I had found what I was looking for. I, was found, I found the point that I can tap into the current. And I know, I know a lot of you guys are probably going to think this is a complete joke because it's such a small amount of current. But let's switch over to the uh, digital multimeter. Okay, folks. This is a really tricky to try to find the, uh, the points. But I'm going to slide down and show you where the tap begins. You can see right there we're starting to to hit into it. And it's a pretty tricky thing to try to find. You can see there that I found a stronger zone. Now if I so that's a positive. Now if I was to switch these around and go in my negative to the inside, we would uh there you can see it's negative. So uh, there was a, a little bit of a hot spot right there. So anyway, you slide these uh, probes and you can really find the area that's that's the perfect point to tap into this. Let me go back here in the polarity. So you can see we're at point zero, point zero 0.01 and 2. There's a point zero 0.04. Man, I just barely breathe or my heart beats and I lightly move these things and it, it radically affects. I've seen it go up to point zero seven and 8 depending on where I'm sliding. But again, then also where you're tapping into it, you know, I, I think from what I've been able to see, the best spot is to tap into it horizontally here as if you would cut this bar in half. If you go above and below, 
I tend not to get hardly well yeah you can see I saw something go by there but anyway above and below I usually don't get anything I'm not getting anything now I may have tilted this over a little bit now if you were to come up into this zone you can see that we got current if I go back down to this zone I'm making contact the whole time I don't have any the other thing that's kind of interesting to do is put them up here and slide down the magnet and you'll get to this zone this uh, block wall I believe it's referred to as and you'll see the current there we are now we'll slide past it in this side and it will disappear again so again I'm really amazed that I even uh, bumped into this you know I found this uh, point I guess you could say kind of by accident just uh, fiddling around with this let me try this side again I think I was maybe moving a little too fast but there we go we're in that in that zone so I'm gonna just uh, here in the camera see if I can't find a a better placement in this tap and get a little more current I saw a three let me back up a little there's the three so anyway you you have to play with this to find the hot spot oh there's a four I got up to four it's kinda of fun like I said I've had it up into seven and eight okay I just wanted to point out quickly some ideas that I want to pursue with this uh, discovery here um, a lot of electromagnets are made out of uh, plates of steel and they're stacked uh, this way I would like to explore the idea of, of laminating the plates this way so that the lines of the plates run like this I hope you can envision what I'm saying and uh, I really think and this is just my own personal theory on, on how this may be generating a current at this point but I'll show you and explain what I'm thinking I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts but when you put the uh, magnetic keeper down here on the bottom of a horseshoe type magnet and you spike it and you get it holding and you got the current in theory it seems to me that the electromagnetic current would be cir uh, circling like this and if that's the case it's obvious that the inside of this bend you're going to have a, a current there's going to be a potential difference between here and this outside radius um, almost like the air that travels over a wing if you have a wing and you have the air blowing over it this uh, side has farther to travel than this side I think that that's what's establishing the difference here that's enabling us to get a negative and a positive on our current reading at this point it could also be uh, what's called I believe it's called the block wall where the magnetic effect uh, polarity shifts and twists and actually changes you should look into and research that if you're curious in pursuing this farther but anyway again pretty amazing to me that you can tap in here and pull off current I mean no matter how small the effect at this point the fact that it's even there is pretty exciting to me so I do intend on uh, scaling this up pursuing this farther uh, exploring these concepts and just seeing where I can take this so anyway try it out guys let me know how it works for you